So we all know 343 was definitely not ready for a game as a service when it comes to Halo Infinite. Though, things are certainly improving with the recent initiatives 343 are putting together. And some recent news has dropped about those initiatives, as well as the partner teams and their part of helping support Halo Infinite's live service, as well as it looks like there is going to be no campaign expansion anytime soon, but there is a little bit of glimmer of hope. And it all kind of ties into a new mode that's coming into Halo Infinite. So if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. I'm sure many of us remember this whole video talking about what 343 is planning to do, but I don't think they properly provided enough context and scope to what they're looking to accomplish with this new reallocation of resources for the team at 343. There are some serious repercussions for what they're focusing on here, because essentially what they said is that they're looking to do is to focus on the live service aspect of the game, which is currently really struggling with Halo Infinite. It's pretty much been the biggest struggle and biggest pain point in the franchise. And even though I say Halo Infinite launched in a good state, it just hasn't received the support that it needs for it to be a live service. The recent news has dropped saying that there are three big objectives that 343 is trying to accomplish now. That's pretty much what they were stating with this, but it provides better context to the whole thing, saying that they're looking to re rebuild a sustainable team, which is something that we know that 343 has been saying the entire time that they want to keep the health of the team in focus, which is very important because, you know, we all look back to Halo 5 and how much content was dropping with that game, but we've seen from devs on Twitter and what Joseph Stein has said that they want to maintain a healthy workforce within 343, that Halo 5's content rollout was total burnout. It was not sustainable whatsoever. We've heard a lot about contract work with 343, and it sounds like they're actually going to be focusing less on contract work, even though it did work out well when it comes to the production of the game, but to maintain the live service, looking to keep people on, which is super important as well. And even though Microsoft is currently in a hiring freeze, I just saw some news saying that there was a thousand plus people that were just released and laid off by Microsoft. 343 is still able to hire people. Though if you look right now, there are no positions available right now at the website. So they're not kind of like broadcasting this out saying like, hey, we're reaching out to anybody who wants to get hired. I think it's kind of more of an internal kind of upgrade, grabbing people where you can kind of thing. This tweet here from Bathrobe Spartan really showcased that just like one month ago, new people were being hired into 343 as actual employees rather than contract workers. So it's gonna be a bit of a mix. It's not like a wide hiring ability that 343 can pull off due to the overhand of Microsoft kind of constraining things a bit there, but they are able to bring new people on. As 343 really focuses on trying to fix up their internal tools to be able to produce content better, they are relying a lot on external studios to put things together properly. A lot of heavy lifting when it comes to Forge has actually been from Skybox Labs. They've been outsourcing to that company quite a lot to try to get Forge up and running in time, which things are looking quite amazing for Forge, and it's gonna be a great addition to the franchise, especially for this game, that we at least have some content that the community can create and play around with while we're still waiting around for season three and future content drops as well, which we have some more information on as well in this video. Certain Affinity has helped out a lot as well when it comes to the content for the season two battle pass. So you can see there are some multiple things that they created that did get added into the game, which is really awesome to see. And I'm really excited to see what comes from Certain Affinity. Obviously, we've heard all about Tatanka. We have a little bit of extra information about Tatanka in, in this video as well. But from the recent news that's been going on, guys, that the morale at 343 has actually been been going up as there have been progress moving forward improvements every day according to bathrobe sparring on twitter here saying that things are getting better we're getting to the point where it needs to be we're just not really seeing it on the front end in the game where improvements being made but a lot is happening in the back end that will eventually hopefully get us in the seasonality by season three or at least according to by 343 though with this huge focus on the live service when it comes to halo infinite a lot of those resources have been moved from the campaign side of things over to the multiplayer side of things to help just get that thing up and running, which definitely means there's going to be a long delay when it comes to our next campaign expansion. We've heard a lot of rumors about Halo the Endless, and there might be some things to that rumor and that trademark as well. But right now, for the foreseeable future, it's going to be very multiplayer focused. But there is a chance for some more story and narrative experiences to be had within Halo Infinite through the narrative events. 343 shift from working on pretty much everything to just focusing on the live service of the game has caused quite a bit of delays when it comes to, saying campaign expansions or something like that, as they're really going all in on focusing on the game as a service. This is going to be an indefinite period as well. There is no foreseeable future change or any kind of 
timeline of when we could see the teams that are currently working on campaign stuff like currently finish up network co-op to be released this november for the winter update those people will then be moved over to the multiplayer side of things as well so they're going all in to try to get this live service well actually alive and uh, as a service now i'm a big campaign fan when it comes to halo so when i hear this it's quite saddening but it does sound like they're going to be trying to focus a lot of this extra effort into these narrative events which can be a little concerning to hear as in the second half of the narrative event for season two was uh well barely a narrative season three will bring in some more narrative events coming in as well you can see this is one of these spartans from season two as you can tell it's the same kind of armor set right here we'll see how this actually plays out and it actually does provide a narrative for us to kind of feel like there is some kind of story element to it but the thing is that okay so you're going to provide some kind of story element how is that going to be tied into the game well it sounds like it might tie a bit into the mode extraction that we've talked about previously on the channel here extraction being this pve type of game that will be kind of more of a small scale kind of thing uh, the current rumors are that it's gonna be mainly played on the current multiplayer maps i've heard some rumors about unique btb maps uh, we'll just kind of have to wait and see how that actually plays out though it does i've heard this previously and multiple times that it's going to be focusing on what's currently available within the multiplayer to play extraction now they do say here within the recent news from bathro spartan saying that the extraction mode will be kind of a catalyst or a platform to be able to provide some gameplay tied to these narrative events as there will be some more pve elements tied into it as well again we'll just have to wait and see how it actually plays out and this might be more of a season four kind of thing as we've heard nothing about extraction coming in with season three and i wouldn't plan on that happening but it definitely is something to take note of i mean we've seen leaks about extraction since uh the toy reveals back in like the 2020s and also the 2019 as well there is currently a small team working on new experiences when it comes to Halo Infinite. This might be tied into what we've heard about those recent rumors about Halo Infinite switching to Unreal Engine, as it does sound like it be maybe a different type of game, and they're evaluating whether that space would be the right engine to utilize for this new experience. Some people have theorized that this new experience is Halo of the Endless. Some have also speculated that it's going to be an augmented reality or virtual reality type of game. If it's that's the case, then maybe switching to over Unreal would make sense. But right now, like slipping up, switching off of the Halo Infinite off of Slow Space Engine just would not make sense right now. For the amount of dev time and effort that they put into this new engine, I would not see the actual game ever switching. I'm pretty sure these new experiences will not be revealed to us at all for probably another two, maybe even three years or something like that. Game development takes a long time. So in the immediate future, the next six months, what can you expect to see from 343? Well, I would expect to see some more updates coming into Halo Infinite, fixing up a few things, maybe some fixes to desync or something like that. We do have the winter update, which looks to have some changes when it comes to the sandbox. I'm sure some bug fixes as well tied into there. And then with season three in March being the kind of hopeful start of seasonality of three to four month seasons coming for Halo Infinite, we could see more updates coming and more content on the way as well. And of course, once I get more information on that, I'll share with you guys here on the channel. I recently released a video the other day talking about the secret things that were hidden within the Forge video, like talking about the new armor sets as well as the changes to the gravity hammer. Check out this video right here to catch that. Thank you very well for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.